alongside the standard leveling that you do in cyberpunk 2077 of your level to unlock perks and also of your street cred to unlock access to certain things there's an underlying skill progression system that essentially unlocks very powerful buffs for all of the different play styles in the game depending on how you kill enemies and thereby accumulate experience for that now there are some very efficient ways that you can level up these five different skill trees and that is what we're looking at in this video today when you open up your character tab, you'll notice there's a button in the bottom right hand corner here that mentions skill progression. And this is the system that I'm referring to. So as you can see, there are five categories here, headhunter, netrunner, shinobi, solo and engineer. And all of these can be leveled all the way from level one to 60. And along the way, all of these will unlock additional perks for you at, at, and additional buffs to certain things within the game. And each one of these in a way represents a specific style of playing the game. Now, it's absolutely beneficial for you to have all five of these characters fully leveled to 60 because that will be the maximum benefit to your character. However, if you're looking to play a certain specific way, like let's say, for example, you want to play a very stealthy character and employ snipes and optical camo and that sort of thing, it behooves you to rather focus on the headhunter first, since this will give you most benefits to that particular playing style. So then starting us off with headhunter in the first place, this is a style of play that essentially wants you to use pistols, silenced weapons, get a lot of headshots, snipe and all of that. So it focuses around essentially using stealth and optical camo and stuff. And therefore the unlocks that you get from here absolutely benefit that style of play. So you can see you're getting decreased visibility to enemies and this carries on. You get optical camo is active while you grapple enemies. And then it further on even gives you more advantages to using optical camo. In other words, you're getting the charge back quicker when you actually use focus mode and data and so on so very much a stealthy style of play and therefore to actually unlock progress in headhunter absolutely also rewards that style of play so headhunter the name itself says it if you go for headshot kills and you'll notice the xp accumulating on the side there you'll notice that headshot kills are by far the most efficient way that you actually get experience in this tree now what you can also do is use sniper rifles of course because that is for sure how you can guarantee some good old headshots and you will notice the headshot xp really just racking up on the side there and that's going to be your fastest way to essentially work your way towards getting 60 out of 60 as a headhunter next up we have netrunner which is absolutely the hacking option out of these five so if you're looking to play the game by using a lot of quick hacks and essentially killing enemies with this game's version of magic, if you want to look at it that way, then this is obviously the tree for you. A lot of the benefits inside this tree give you better RAM recovery and just better ways for you to actually use smart weapons, which is also considered, you know, kind of like a Netrunner kind of thing. And then, of course, as we get deeper into this tree, it's going to start benefiting Overclock, which is one of the new features in the game, or at the very least, one of the new refined features in the game, which essentially allow you to use your own health as a way to fuel casting uh, or rather using all of these hacks on enemies. Now, as you can imagine, the best way for you to essentially level Netrunner is actually to use quick hacks on enemies. So simply just find yourself a nice cluster of enemies, upload some hacks onto them, and uh we should be able to just see that the uh, netrunner xp coming in on the side here so as soon as these guys actually go ahead and die you're gonna see some netrunner xp coming in on the left side over there now, i do also get some headhunter that's why headhunter accumulates kind of like by itself uh which is really good but um the other thing that you can also obviously use is a mono wire mono wire kills also help with netrunner so we can just murder these guys out quickly with that and you'll see we we'll get some uh net runner xp coming in from the mono wire kills as well i think i will have to finish dude these guys are pretty uh tough let's just continue on down here Got a couple of smacks there we go all right you're not gonna need that head anymore Ooh. What a spicy gentleman. One second. And then I think we got one more dude over here. And once he goes bye bye. There we go. So you'll also then see some Netrunner XP basically coming from all the kills that I got with uh, the Mono Wire. 
now the other way that you also get netrunner xp is obviously by hacking things so as you are shutting cameras down or essentially hacking stuff and you know getting materials out of boxes and things like that anything that you're doing that you're employing essentially this menu to apply you know cyber hacks or anything onto is gonna over time accumulate your xp on the netrunner side and that's why most players will find that Netrunner and Headhunter are the two that they have the least problem with actually accumulating XP of because both of the things for Headhunter and Netrunner you kind of like organically do in the game already. So these two are going to be always ahead in terms of levels above the other three that we still have to discuss. The third tree is the Shinobi tree and this is for people that want to use any bladed weapon, especially katanas to kill enemies with and this actually also includes some upgrades for the sandy v stand system which is of course the one of the systems in the game that let you slow down time for your enemy while you move at maximum speed pretty much if you watched edge runners and you want to be david martinez then this is absolutely the skill tree for you as we move through this tree you'll see there are some benefits to movement speed and you know less stamina cost when you dash and all that and when you finally get to the end of the tree then you'll see that there's a pretty big upgrade for sand stand as well now as you can expect to actually level up this tree most efficiently you absolutely want to be using a bladed weapon uh extra style points for if you're using a katana and you simply just go up to the enemies you cut them down and you will see that shinobi xp trickle on in as you give it to them with uh, a bladed weapon where are you going sir you're going nowhere and as soon as you kill these dudes you'll see yes we do get some head under xp but quite a substantial amount of shinobi xp also comes in then moving us on to the fourth tree is the solo tree this one is for berserk melee build so this is also a melee tree but more focused on the berserk mechanic now unfortunately uh, i believe earlier than patch 2.0 but definitely with patch 2.0 berserk is not really viable as a mode for playing with weapons like guns anymore it's absolutely a melee tree a melee build focus so unfortunately that's something that we lost we used to be able to do berserk from a gun based side as well but now we have to go melee uh the way that i look at it shinobi is for bladed weapons and solo is for blunt weapons so if you're using hammers and baseball bats and that sort of thing then solo is the way to go now solo also benefits uh shotgun play styles as well so as you look through this tree you'll see that some of the things in here you know benefit things like gorilla arms and you know blunt uh blunt combat uh, also using your fists of course there are a couple of things here which increases your you know survivability and basically your ability to deal more damage and actually siphon some life when you do finishes and then last but not least we have two pretty big buffs right at the end here for adrenaline rush and for berserk so as mentioned this absolutely does suit that tree now, as you can imagine the way to level up this tree is uh there's really three different ways you can go about it that are very efficient you can either just run around and beat bad people with your fists or with a baseball bat or like i said any blunt weapon or you can use shotguns so just demonstrating here i'll just quickly pull out this double barrel shotgun here and you'll notice that when you use the double barrel shotgun that's actually going to give you some solo xp as well so we can just blast these guys and there we go okay, and i did not kill him and you'll see that i'm actually getting some solo xp as well i even just got like a little level there at the top which is phenomenal now a quick little pro tip here if you actually want to double dip a little bit you can use a tech shotgun and what that's going to do is it's going to level the last tree engineering which we still have to discuss at the same time so instead of just using a normal you know power double barrel shotgun or something like that think about using something like the satara which is a tech shotgun and what this is going to do is it's still going to give you the xp that you would get for solo because you're using a shotgun but now you're also going to get engineer because you're using a tech weapon so we can just blow oh my god blow these guys away and there we go okay yeah Dude, did I not murder this person down here? I did believe they were dead. Okay, we got the last one here. Hold on. And there we go. And now what you're going to see is I'm actually going to get solo XP and I'm going to get engineer. So this is a cool way for you to essentially level both at the same time. Because solo engine and engineer are, at least for me, and I think it might be for you as well, the two ones which take the longest to level. So you should actually do it this way. And that last but not least brings us to the engineer tree 
which is our final one now the engineer tree uh technically speaking has benefits for a lot of different things but overall its flavor is that of a tech weapon tree so if you're planning on using a lot of tech weapons then absolutely you should be investing into this tree and then secondly the other thing as well is that this also dips into the fury mechanic which is something that we can see over here uh over here this this here is a fury state that you can go into uh, this edge runner uh, skill that you can buy here and essentially that allows you uh to also just upgrade this a little bit with uh, getting like an emp blast you know every once in a while while it is active now engineer is the odd one out because it's actually a, a huge amount of ways in which you can level this up in terms of combat the, i would say the most efficient way of doing it is a combination of tech weapons as well as grenades grenades are a phenomenal way to level up engineer let's just get a grenade onto these dudes here there you go and you'll see you actually get a quite a huge bump of engineer xp just by using uh, grenades the other way that you can also level up engineer is actually by dismantling and crafting things uh, dismantling and crafting is going to give you a fairly decent amount of xp uh, and maybe I can just demonstrate that quickly by going here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to my quick hacks, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna craft a bunch of like vanilla, you know, quick hacks. So let me just let me just craft like a few here. I'll craft like at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now if you go out, you'll see I'll actually get quite a bit of net runner XP because I'm crafting quick hacks, but I'll also get quite a bit of engineering XP because i'm crafting engineering stuff dismantling also does net you uh some engineering xp but not nearly as much as crafting so you should absolutely look at ways in which you can spend some of your crafting resources that you really aren't using anymore like for instance i have all these tier 2 quick act components that i'll never use because i'm using tier 5 quick acts now so that's just a lot of xp lying right there that i could potentially you know craft things with and actually get some points in engineering with likewise with your components here as well the same thing just crafting some weapons and uh, using up all of the lower ones what you can also do one last thing is you can actually also just scale all of your materials up so what i mean by that is like for example i have a whole bunch of um of of tier one components so i could use my tier one components and scale them up into tier two components so i can say craft here and i can basically just do all of them and then now i have a whole bunch of uh, of those components which again i can scale up to the next tier so i can take all my tier two and scale them up to tier three and that's actually also going to give you a fairly huge amount of engineering xp so you can actually game the system a little bit like this because you are gaining a huge amount of these materials by just doing farms like this and just killing enemies and finding their guns and dismantling their guns and all of that stuff so this is essentially a little engine that can feed itself and it should provide you with a quick way to actually level up and progress through engineering. And that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Let me know in the comments down below if anything about this was not clear. If you have some additional tips and tricks as to little sneaky ways in which you found to level up these five skill trees individually. Because this is what I would really consider to be the end game. A long time after you've finished the main campaign of the game. And after you've finished essentially leveling your character all the way to 50 street cred and stuff. These might still not be leveled up all the way. And so you'll need to spend some time to actually level these up if you want to make the most insane version of the build whichever one that is that you're trying to build in the game go ahead and give this video a like and consider subbing to the channel if you enjoy content like this for cyberpunk 2077 as well as a whole bunch of other games which i cover on this channel since it is a variety based channel but other than that it's just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world till next video fucking cheers